Hello everyone, how are you guys doing? Hopefully you guys are having a wonderful day and today we are here with a video on how to kill demonic gorillas in old school runescape. A little demonic gorilla guide for you guys. I've killed a bunch of these on my account, not this one, but free to play to max, a series that I've done. I killed probably about like 1.5k and I got insanely lucky on my zenites. So if you're getting zenite drops, it is a wonderful time. If you're not, it can be a bit frustrating, but they're only a one in 300 drop for a close to 15 mil drop. So it's pretty encouraging even if you're not getting them because in your head it's always around the corner um, as far as the absolute re minimum requirement for this you're going to need monkey madness 2 completed so if you don't have that done uh, it's you know like two to three hour long quest it can be a little annoying but you will have to do that good for med levels to kind of get into the uh, pvming scene of the high levels and honestly even for high levels that want to come by it's still really good money especially if you can do them pretty effectively they're kind of uh a more effort you put into it, the more you get out of it type boss. Some bosses are just very easy to go through and don't require much thought. These these do require a little bit of thinking. So let's go ahead and get on into how you got to kill them and what all you need to be thinking about. So we'll start with the requirements. Like I said, Monkey Madness 2 is you know the absolute baseline requirement. On top of that, as far as where you should probably be combat-wise, 80 strength and 80 attack would be uh, about the minimum I would go with. And then along with that, 80 range is a pretty good mark to be at. Obviously, the higher the better, more kills per hour, all that type of stuff, but you can definitely get it done here with those type of stats. Honestly, if you know what you're praying and you know what's going on, you'll be fine. So don't worry too much about the stats. Just as long as you can <laughs> kill them at a base rate, you'll be good. And then as far as prayer, um, down in the bottom left, just a little side note. I mean, if you don't have 43 prayer, I, I don't know what you're doing. And then 70 prayer for piety would be ideal. I mean, if you have Monkey Madness 2 done, and you don't have piety, probably about time to do that. So would recommend uh, 70 prayer. And if you have rigor, that's going to help a lot, but that's a late game upgrade. That's not by any means necessary, just useful. As far as what you can expect from Demonic Gorillas, as far as their drops, it's not really that great. I mean, there is the Zenite as a 1 in 300. That's that's what everyone cares about. 15 mil, like I said earlier, real good drop. And honestly, probably only going to go up and up and up in price as Old School RS is out longer because more money will be in the game and these things are always going to be needed because Zenite jewelry is just top tier. And then along with that, you get some clues at a decent rate. The hard clues are 1 in 100. The elites are 1 in 500, which isn't too crazy. But, you know, just kind of get them passively. Maybe you can work towards some masters if you would like. Um, in terms of what amount of kills you're going to get per hour, it ranges anywhere from 35. Maybe. I'm sure you could get less if you really wanted to. But about 30 to 75. Um, maybe even a little more than that. But it's a pretty wide range, just like with most bosses, you know. If you come here with base 80s or if you come here with 99s and max gear, there's going to be a wide range there. Nonetheless, the GP per hour still is very, very good. Now, keep in mind, this is obviously averaging out the Zenite drop rate. So if you don't get a Zenite, then you're going to be much lower than this. But two to five mil per hour is what you should be expecting. And, uh, you know, if you get Zenites a lot, then you can expect more than this, which would be a, a really good time. So not a lot of notable drops, but there are a ton of rare drops on this table. So whenever you hit one of these, do not be like, oh my goodness, I'm so unlucky. I hit a drop that was one in 500 and oh my God, would you believe it? A Zunite's one in 300. What, what are the odds? Well, up on screen, you can see there's like 45 things here that are greater than a one in 250 chance. So putting all that together, it's not really that rare to see one of these drops. Um, I mostly add this because almost all of the people that I see start to come here get, I don't know if they get discouraged, but they like to complain a lot about the drops they're getting and how they should be getting Zenites. And that's just simply not the case. Like there are so many rare drops here. You're going to see them. Don't get discouraged. Don't worry about it. RNG is a fickle thing. So you just live your life and you'll be all right. Then in terms of like baseline strats, I'll obviously delve more into this as we get towards killing them, but just the general idea, you're going to want a ranged and melee based setup here. Mage is of no use here, so just count that out. And then as far as what you can be attacked by, by these demonic gorillas, they use all three combat styles. So you will have to be ready for them to flick between the three. We'll get more into that, but just to give you an idea as far as what we're looking for with the gear, we want good defense and we also want two different attack styles. And don't worry that they have a lot of attack styles. They're moderately predictable, so you're, you're good to go. So now looking at the gear, on the left-hand side, we have the full-out meta setup uh, for the most part. The Slayer Helms in this should be imbued if you're using a Slayer Helm. 
If you're not using a Slayer Helm, then either go with a Justice Shard Face Guard, a Serp Helm, or if you don't have access to either of those two, you can use a Helm of Netsuna as well. And the rest of the gear is basically like a max melee setup with just a little bit of mage defense. You can see I'm wearing an arc light. Arc light is going to be by far the way to go for demonic gorillas. If you don't have any charges for your arc light, you could go with a rapier, a blade of salador, or an abyssal tentacle or a whip. So essentially an arc light or a whip probably, um, but there are a few things in between depending on where you sit. Really, really would recommend arc light charges. If you don't have them, just do a little bit of slayer. I mean, it's gonna help you so much. And then looking at the inventory for the meta setup, I have a twisted bow with a arma chest plate switch along with an anguish switch and then a switch to an assembler uh, as well, which is gonna be a nice little four-way switch for me that'll do really good for range. And then as far as the rest of the inventory, two super combat sets, two cerebrews, a decent amount of super restores. I also bring an angler fish so I can eat that before I leave the bank and then I put another shark in there just to overheal. And then teleport to your house and a teleport to the ground tree or a royal seed pod is what it is called and then as far as the base setup this one's a lot more affordable probably like a 10 mil gear setup and honestly would really recommend you have a, at least a blowpipe i mean you really really need a blowpipe you could downgrade the amulo fury you could downgrade the berserk ring uh that avernic defender is supposed to be a drag and i don't expect the base setup to have an avernic but you get the idea but overall with the base setup pretty cheap i mean fire cape amulet of fury which you could change out for an amulet of glory if you wanted to Again, an arc light, an arma dehyde top, and Varrock plate skirt. Again, dragon defender, barrows gloves, D boots, and a berserker ring that you could also trade out if you'd like. Uh, in terms of what you can switch to in your inventory, this is just like, again, in terms of just a base, base setup. I'm trying to make it easy for people that are just getting here. A blowpipe accumulator switch would work perfectly fine. You could throw in a little leg switch and a plate body switch for melee and range if you'd like. But again, not necessary. This is just for people that are starting to get their toes wet with demonic gorillas. So in terms of the inventory here, uh, I did one less super set because you're probably not going to be lasting as long. You probably uh, less than maybe a super restore or two, depending on kind of how well you're defending the attacks. That really is all it comes down to. And then in terms of the rest of the inventory, just food and teleports uh, to and fro. So pretty good stuff overall. I mean, just work out your food to prayer ratio. It just depends on how much you pay attention and focus. And that's just something that's, you know, person to person. And then finally, a thing you could add to your setup is a rune pouch with nature's fires and laws in it. The nature's and the fire should be for high alking. Um, this is assuming that you just last so long on your trips that you need inventory space. So if you're not that type of person, you're fine without the rune pouch. Uh, you can also bring law runes in the rune pouch so that you can have a place to put the runes that you get. And then as far as a spec weapon, really it's just an SGS if you can afford one, or if, if you don't really care that much, go ahead and use a blowpipe spec. Or if you're using the meta setup and you just don't care to have any specs, then you could just use the arc light since you may as well. Now moving on to how to get there and how to kill them, you're gonna to wanna to use your royal seed pod, which everyone should have after completing Monkey Madness 2. If you don't, just go ahead and go trade the man and get some back. By the man, I mean this guy right here. He's got him, just buy him. Then you just gotta run west out through the Grand Tree area and over to this little opening that you can cross over. You can also check your KC right here if you would like to at all. I don't think I have that much KC on this account, so please don't roast. Yeah, I have like none. My other account has a ton of the KC, believe me, I, I don't just have 33 kills overall. This is an account that I barely use, so before you roast me in the comments, just remember. And after running a little northeast, you'll find yourself at this cavern entrance. You're gonna wanna go ahead and use that and then just be ready uh, to run around. Essentially, this is like a, a multi zone out there, so you don't wanna be in multi for this. It just is far too much. Um, the singles is over here, so you can click right there and it will drag you around. So just to touch on a couple mechanics before I run in, um, you should always be praying mage if you don't know what something's going to attack because your range defense is higher and if you're out of melee distance then they won't melee you so mage is going to be the most beneficial. And in addition to that, you're going to want to change combat styles every time you deal 50 HP in one sort of combat style. So those are a couple of the base features you're gonna wanna know before you head on in there. So as far as your plan for killing demonic gorillas, you can try to watch me and see what I do, but just be warned, even when you know everything to do, you're still going to mess up sometimes, and that's okay. 
Um, it can be tough to learn, and honestly, even once you know it, it can still be a little tough. What you have to understand defensively is that demonic gorillas are going to change their attack style after they have three unsuccessful hits, uh, whether that be just because they actually hit a zero on you or because you are praying and then they hit a zero on you because of that. Either way, that counts towards the three, and once they have three unsuccessful hits, they will change attack styles. They will also be throwing boulders from the ceiling. Those do not count towards the three unsuccessful hits, so don't count that into it, but still be weary of the boulders falling from the ceiling that you can easily avoid. Um, offensively, you're going to want to switch your attack styles, like I said earlier, after 50 uh, HP worth of damage, and there will also be some visual cues from the demonic gorillas as towards when this is happening, because they will kind of just stand up in the air, beat their chest, and their prayer above their head will change, and so then you should change your attack style accordingly. Now, that's the basis. If you understand both of those two things, you'll be doing incredibly well, and honestly, it just comes down to practicing uh, your switches and practicing like reading what is going on in the scenario. Now, there is a kind of added way to negate some extra damage because whenever the demonic gorillas are changing attack styles, since they use three, there are two attack styles they could switch to. So you might not necessarily know what they are, but there is a way to actually kind of figure it out. So if the demonic gorilla is attacking you with melee, there is no way to know what's coming next. It will either be magic or range, and you're going to want to pray magic because it's the higher damage dealing of the two with the gear that you're wearing. Whenever you see what it is, just switch to the according prayer, or if it's already magic, just stay on there and you'll be fine. However, if the demonic gorilla is using mage or range upon hitting its third time on you, you should back up a couple steps, and if you do that, then you should switch to, if it was magic before, switch to range prayer. If it was range before, switch to magic prayer. And if the demonic gorilla does not approach you, then you will be fine. You have already switched to the opposite prayer that it can hit you from from a distance. Um, but if it starts running at you, then you know it's melee. So if it is attacking you from a distance, you can kind of tell if it's going to be another distance-based attack or if it's going to be a melee-based attack. And that is a way to negate some potential damage, even if you don't know what the demonic gorilla is going to be hitting you with and ultimately that's it it's really really simple but it's really really difficult in practice so it's easier said than done uh, it just takes a lot of a lot of time a lot of getting used to and honestly once you start to get going start to get in the rhythm it, it's really enjoyable but it depends if you're into like really intensive pvming if you're not then this isn't for you but if you are this is definitely something up your alley that is going to be it for this demonic gorilla guide hopefully you guys enjoyed if you guys did make sure to leave a like anything you want to tell me any guides you want to see from me in the future let me know when comment down below and on top of that if you guys want to see more videos like this as soon as they go live make sure to subscribe and with that said hopefully you guys have a wonderful day and uh peace